Hi everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Brianna and welcome to our monthly coffee chat. I just made myself, I am on my lunch break, I just made myself a nice warm cup of coffee. For some reason, it is like freezing today. I'm gonna check the weather because I feel like it's just more cold than it normally has been. It says it's 35, which I mean is cold, like 35 degrees Fahrenheit. It is cold, but it's not like I would say but maybe it is bone chilling. I haven't been outside today and I don't plan on it until tonight. So either way, I just wanted a nice warm cup of coffee. And I find that when I drink my coffee first thing in the morning where I love that and it's so enjoyable, I found that more recently my heart has been like skyrocketing upwards, like just like extremely palpitating and like being crazy. So I'm trying to drink my coffee in the afternoon before lunch or after lunch or something just so I can enjoy it and have a nice little hot cup of coffee. But what we're gonna do light glam today, like when I tell you I'm trying to do the five step makeup, so we're probably gonna do just a nice little five step makeup routine today. And Corey and I are actually headed out to a hockey game tonight. So we are going to do some glam, like not glam, but light makeup for that. So without further ado, I'm just rambling, but let's get into this month's coffee chat. All right, coffee chat is commencing. We have bro I broken them out into three categories Disney life and YouTube and social media there were a lot of Disney questions this month for some reason I mean there always are but this one in particular you guys had a ton of Disney questions so I thought you know what we're gonna have a big Disney segment in this month's coffee chat but the first question that we are gonna start with which I got asked a few times was just how are you doing how are you? How are things? How are things going? And we're going to talk about how I'm doing. I'm also going to go in today. The only thing I'm going to put as my base today is the La Roche-Posay Face 50 Tinted Mineral Sunscreen. This has been like a tried and true of mine. I would, oh, of course it's blurry. I'm like just trying to be a, just trying to be a content girly. This is it. I'll link it down below. You can look at it there. You're supposed to shake it really well, but... I would say this has been a pretty big tried and true of mine for the last few months. Emily Kaiser recommended it or used to use it and I was just so, well I don't have my clips in here, that's okay. I was just so sick of like using a lot of thicker based makeup products that I wanted something a little bit thinner and I wanted sunscreen especially for like Disney and vacations so I picked this and this is what we're putting on. But anyway the question was also this is going to be so hard I just like went to try to and I looked at the mirror immediately so we're going to just hope that this works but how are you doing? I am doing okay. January was the worst and not in like a crazy way but I just did not like January of 2024. It was just not for me. We had a family member unexpectedly or not a family member but basically a very close family friend that I used to call aunt passed away very unexpectedly and it just really took the entire month of January like the first two weeks of January just kind of like by storm and it just really kind of like rattled our family of course rattled their family this was someone that was really close to us close to me close to my mom and so it was just a really challenging month to start and then it just got really busy we were doing some services and Corey and I hadn't taken any Christmas decorations down and then once that kind of passed and we all moved through that through that then the month just you know got away from us we had come back we needed to take down our christmas decorations every weekend was busy we were doing just a lot of things and i just felt constantly overwhelmed through the month of january which is why i didn't really vlog or do anything with youtube i think i posted or actually filmed like one January video like that I actually put up in the month of January and that was the like romanticizing winter while working a nine-to-five It was all that I had in me was to do that. That was like literally the only thing that I could do 2024 did not start out in the best way possible, but we're through it now. I'm feeling a lot better and just a little bit more grounded. So let's get into some Disney questions. The first one is, when is your next Disney trip? We get this question a ton. I'm also going in with the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder just to set that concealer and the like tinted sunscreen. But our next Disney trip is in about a month and a half. So we are headed back to Disney in March and we cannot wait this is going to be a trip of a lifetime we're staying at a new hotel you can take your guesses down below it is deluxe and we rented dvc points to be able to do it we're so excited we're looking forward to it we have been talking about this trip almost at nauseam for a little while now because every night we just get so much more excited and that it's like right around the corner so that is our next trip it's in march we're so excited so that's first disney question the next one is would love to know your experience as an out-of-state annual 
pass holder. Our experience as out-of-state annual pass holders, I would say, is a little bit different and more con like unconventional than the standard person. So in the last year, Corey and I went to Disney. We got our annual passes in May, so they'll expire this May, but the amount of times that we've been with our annual pass in particular was we went in May, September, and no, May, I went in August, so May, August, September, November of 2023, and then we are headed down for March of 2024. So those are going to be the times that we're using our annual pass. The amount of times that we've been into the parks and the amount of times that we've parked hopped, it has definitely been worth it. I was in, as an out-of-state person with a Walt Disney World annual pass, I think that you just really need to make sure that you're prioritizing Disney being your trip of choice for that calendar year. We got a little bit off the rails. We would have never went to Europe had we not booked that trip before we paid for the Walt Disney World annual pass because it was just a lot of money, but we knew that the minute the passes came out that we wanted them and it was just the way that our like kind of year was working. So I've loved my experience as an out of state with an annual pass. I also think it makes Corey and I have a little bit more flexibility in when we head down to the parks based on when there's deals if we find a really good DVC rental store reservation. We're just never mentally worried about paying for park tickets on top of certain things. However, the annual pass is expensive up front. So we've had a really great experience and if you're thinking about it, I would recommend really sitting down with your significant other, crunching the numbers and saying, okay, this is how much the annual pass is going to cost in order for us to break even. This is how long we have to go to Disney World for. Do we think we're going to do that this year? And just really kind of crunching those numbers. Thinking about becoming an annual pass holder, was it worth it? And how much did you save with it? So Corey and I are, of course, out-of-state pass holders and we're not DVC members, which means that we need to have the most expensive pass, which is the Incredipass. I think $1,449, like $1,449. Corey and I added PhotoPass and we added the water park to it. So our ticket or our annual pass, all said and done for the year, was $1,700. Now, if I count how many times we went to the park or how many times we will have used it in the calendar year, we went in May, which we used one, two, three park hopper tickets. And then we went in August, or I went in August with a friend and got three day pass tickets. So that's already six. And then we went in September for one, two, three, four, five. I think we had six, I think maybe seven. So we'll say, no, I think it was six. Six park days plus a water park day. So we'll include seven. So six plus seven, right? Six plus seven, 13. Plus we went again in November. So that was another I think we had three days, right? Yeah, we had three days of park tickets for that. And then we're going in March again. We're going to have another seven. So in theory, we've been to the park 23 times. So if you multiply that by, let's just say $100 a ticket, that's $2,300, which of course it would be more. So our annual pass for us financially was worth it this calendar year. I could not like I think 1000% and Disney tickets are about 130 to 160 depending on the day and individual ticket or park hopper pass. So I think it's worth it along with that. I do think that we've saved the grand total probably about $1,500 to $2,000 total for the year. And I say that from like dining, we get anywhere from like 5, 10, 15, 20% off. We also get when you're an annual pass holder, 20% off of merchandise. You also get different discounts at restaurants that are around the parks and you get hotel deals, right? So when we were to book a hotel, when we booked Pop Century, instead of spending $250 a night, we spent like 170 right so there is some discrepancy there so I think the annual pass is worth it for our lifestyle and the way that we operate so I would say I would recommend just doing a little bit of research yourself and seeing if it makes the most sense for you all right let's go in with a little bit of bronzer before we just keep chatting and I don't really say anything at all here but I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of a like brighter bronzer I feel like my skin could just use a little bit of help right now with the like paleness. So I'm gonna go in with my Dibs Duo stick. Also, let's see how this comes out because you know I'm not enjoying using that mirror over there. So one second, let me, let's try over here. Oh, okay, not bad in the mirror. This is what we're gonna do. Or not mirror, but camera lens. Now that we have on a little bit of bronzer, I also love these Dibs Duo sticks. You guys know I'm a Dibs girly. This was like the best makeup find that I have ever found. It is neutral, it is easy to blend, it looks so unbelievably natural, and I just love the way it looks. I mean, you really can't mess it up at, at all. It is like, 
I feel like this is if I was known for like a makeup product I am known for like the dibs duo because I'm a dibs duo girly So the next Disney question is are you and your fiance interested in doing a Disney cruise? So yes, we are actually very interested in doing a Disney cruise The only thing is is that we just haven't found the right time I really didn't want to go on a Disney cruise until our annual pass not necessarily expired or was done, but I was like, we've already spent the money on the annual pass. Why would we spend a ton more money on a Disney cruise when we could go back to Walt Disney World when we already have the annual pass? So long story short, yes, we're very interested in a Disney cruise. Will it happen this year? I have absolutely no idea just based on our wedding, mini moons, and all these things that we have coming up. We'll have to see. But I did put it on my 2024 goals that I wanted to try a new Disney experience. So we will see if it's going to come up. But Next Disney question is, will we renew our Walt Disney World annual passes? This is a question that Corey and I have been talking about for probably the last month, like at nauseum. It is something that we talk about every day and figure out if it is actually worth it for us. So because we're not heading down to, as, as of right now, we're not heading down to Walt Disney World at all the remainder of the year because we don't have anything booked as of right now and I don't honestly know if we will be able to because we can't go in April we can't go in May we can't go in June July August we're getting married in September like we just don't know if we're going to actually be able to go but the likelihood of what I said to Corey is do we actually think that we're not going to go again for a full calendar year come you know May 11th is the day that our pass like expires basically like are we not going to be able to actually go again we're 50 50 50% 50 of me wants to say no Brianna you don't need an annual pass for the next year it's not necessary it's going to be a waste of money the other part of me says we can save more money and prioritize going for longer weekends versus bigger trips and still get our Disney fix by having the annual pass and because we're living at my mom's we have a little bit more expendable income and because we both work in really high pace sales jobs, we are really fortunate where we do make a very like, healthy amount of money and we get to save that money as well. I'll never sit here and say we make millions of dollars, but we do have a really healthy income along with YouTube as well. So it's a potential. We're not 100% sure yet. Wanted to give you kind of like the gist of where our mind is at. The next is best Disney sneakers. My favorite Disney sneakers in the world are my Adidas Ultra Boost. I have worn my Swift Runs in the park as well, and the Ultra Boost just completely change the game my feet are always comfortable my feet are never hurting I mean of course they hurt once you reach a certain point but they're smushy they're comfortable they fit with my socks super well they're never like dragging the sock down my foot they're just perfect Corey wears them too and we absolutely love them I can link my same Adidas Ultra Boost down like in the comment section below um, or in the description box down below if you want to shop like a pair that I use a lot I have Three pairs of Ultra Boosts. I always bring two to the park in case it rains and one gets wet, but I love Ultra Boosts and I don't think I'll ever wear another sneaker into the park ever again. And last kind of like Disney and or that realm of questions is, have you ever considered moving to Florida? We have gotten this question almost every month, every three months, for as long as I can remember doing coffee chats or monthly check-ins or whatever that might be based on how often we go to Walt Disney World. And to be quite honest with you, as of right now, no, we do not have any plans to move to Florida. When we originally left the city of Boston, we did plan to move to Florida for about two to three years. However, we decided against it based on getting married, wanted to buy a home, and it just felt silly to go down to Florida to rent for three or four years and kind of like throw that money away just to be close to Disney World. Something that we have considered is going to Florida for an extended period of time, a month, two months, three months, and living near Orlando in like an Airbnb or renting a house and going for a larger chunk of time. We both work from home. We have the availability to be able to do that. Do I think that we'll actually do that in the near future? Probably not again this year. It's just like not the calendar year for us to be able to do it. Never say never because I think we will be snowbirds later on in our life where we will live somewhere warm in the winter and like in New England in the summers. But I don't think that we would ever fully move to Florida unless we really decided that that was best for us. Let's go in with some blush and then we're going to get into some life questions. And we are going to go in today with, with what? With what, Brianna? Actually, you know what? We're going to go in with this really pretty poppy blush that's on the other side of the Debs duo stick this was the one I used today let's get into some life questions the first one is how do you manage life work YouTube etc um I don't 
that's the easy answer no I'm just kidding I mean I really don't manage it all super well I would say you know I do get this question a lot as well like how do you manage to do everything how do you manage you know doing your YouTube and doing actual nine to five work full time and like how do you actually make something like that work and to be honest with you it is a lot of hard work I'll never sit here and say that it's easy work however it's work that I enjoy and I think that's something that's not often talked about on YouTube when you have your like nine to five creators and the reason why is I think that a lot of people I'm also just like going back over my nose with a little bit more of like the tinted um sunscreen and just going up under my eye I think this blush is a little too not like too poppy but I was trying to do just a little bit more like basic makeup today so we're gonna just like blend that back in but I think that something that is not often talked about is if you you should never do YouTube because you want to be a full-time influencer and like you should never you should do it because you want to create content or you want to share your life online and if it takes off in that direction amazing but your mo shouldn't be that you want to do it to like be a full-time like youtube girly and the reason that i say that is because i right now i'm right i'm working my nine to five it's a wednesday this will be up for you guys on thursday and the thing is is i love nothing more than filming for you guys so I take my lunch break when I'm doing sit down videos or vlog check-ins or try-ons during my lunch breaks or really early in the morning or right after five o'clock and into the evening or I'll stay up super late and edit or I'll wake up two hours or three hours early in the morning because I don't edit during the work day and so the way that I your question was more so how do I manage it I I just find that I love it so much that I get excited when I have the opportunity to actually do it, if that makes sense. How do I, like, you know what I mean? I'm just energized to actually be on YouTube and share my life with you guys that it never feels, I mean, yes, at times it does feel overbearing. And when it does, I just don't do it. Hence January, right? Like you guys saw, I really wasn't on YouTube as much in January and that was because I just could not be. I had too much going on in my personal life. We had too much going on just at home and work was busy. There were nights I was working until 7:30 at night at work. And I don't always condone that, but sometimes like we have to do that, you know? And I balance it because one I love it and two it just brings me a lot of peace and joy to be able to do it. So, it can be hard at times, but I just I kind of manage and it sounds bad but one of the best compliments I've ever been given from one of my senior directors at work is that I have one of the highest capacities of anybody that he's ever seen he says I can always be working on 50 to 100 projects a day and somehow get every single one done in an eight-hour period it's a superpower of mine when it comes to work and my personal life and it burns me out at times however I've always been somebody that moves very quick and efficiently so I manage it all because I give myself a little bit of extra time to do it but it also brings me joy so it never feels like an additional job and when I don't have the time to do it I just don't and I think that that's okay also this blush is like really pretty also this is why I love that La Roche Posay it's like the skin is skinning and I'm grateful that I don't have very like I don't have super textured skin so I'm very grateful for that it's something that I've gotten from my grandmother my grandmother and my mother have really really good skin but Either way, that was that question. Next is, how do you take time to relax when you are so busy and have so many goals? Uh, I don't? No, I'm just kidding. Well, I, like, I'm like slightly kidding. So I do try to find time to relax, and when I need to relax, my goals sometimes will take a back seat. And the reason I say that is because this week, for example, Corey and I really wanted to get a podcast episode out. However, I was so burnt out last night that there was no way that we could record and I didn't want to record early this morning. So like the podcast took a back seat and I just like prioritized relaxation. And I have a goal of having, you know, X amount of podcast episodes for the year. That doesn't necessarily mean that my goals can't take a back seat for my mental health or my own mental being. My mom and I really wanted to finish Suits last night and we did. If you haven't watched Suits, Add it to your list because it's the best show I've ever seen in my life but we wanted to spend some time together and I had said to her oh we're gonna record the podcast tonight but we didn't have dinner until super late and then we would have been talking for you know an hour and a half and then we would have and it just like felt like too much so I take time to relax when I'm so busy because I try to really prioritize what feels like what I need in the moment and what I needed in that moment was just some rest and relaxation with my mom and so that is exactly what I did. Next question is how to beat the winter blues. I would say one of the ways that I try to beat the winter blues is I 
I talked about this a little bit in my romanticizing my like romanticizing winter while working a nine to five because I do work fully from home and I think the winter is really tough because we're stuck inside it's freezing cold everything looks dead outside sometimes it's snowing sometimes it's raining and I think the one thing that I do to try to keep myself like in beating the winter blues is just romanticizing little itty bitty moments throughout my life that bring me these little pockets I almost like the way that I think about it is have you ever like do you know those little um, like fireworks that you would throw on the ground they're almost like in a little bag and when you throw them they like pop on the ground and they make a like a firework sound I'm like probably some people may know what I'm talking about but some may not but either way these little like pop things that you throw on the ground and they crackle and they make these pops and I like to view how can I find little things in my life that do that at random spurts of the day that bring me that joy to help me beat the winter blues for example one of them is I constantly have a candle burning it makes it cozy it makes the room warm it makes the room feel and smell just delicious and it just gives me that little like pop of burst when I turn around and I see the candles lit or when I get a whiff of the smell or all of a sudden after 25 minutes I feel a lot cozier and warmer because the heat from the candle has kind of filled the room another one of how I beat the winter blues is throughout the winter I actually try to buy very colorful flowers so I just bought these beautiful 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 bright coral pink roses and white baby's breath from Trader Joe's I would have never gravitated towards those flowers in general but every like I'm looking at them right now every time I look at them this is what my face does like I just light up because I think they are so gorgeous and beautiful and they're just bringing a pop of light into my life and the other thing to beat the winter blues is try to prioritize getting out of your comfort zone with cooking and cooking home cooked meals the one way that Corey and I kick the winter blues right in the ass is by cooking big warm delicious hearty dinners so that by the end of the day I have something to look forward to and I love a big delicious dinner so that is definitely a few ways that I try to beat the winter blues all right let's get into the next question this one is gonna be a little bit loaded and it is not for the lack of the person that asked it but I do believe that is important to share because I don't think it's talked about a lot on the internet and the question is how do you afford to travel so much and I know that this question came from a good place and may potentially looking for areas where you can travel as much as Corey and I do however there's a few things I would say probably maybe three we'll start with three things that make it available for Corey and I to travel so much the first being that I work for an international travel company I travel a ton for work so Iceland I didn't pay for work paid for my first two weeks that I traveled in Europe I didn't pay for work paid for so when I went to Spain in the beginning of 2023 work paid for so I am very fortunate where the company that I work for is a travel company and I travel a lot for work. That's one of the reasons and ways that I can afford to travel so much is because I'm not necessarily paying for it. The second reason is Corey and I both work in sales. We both make a very healthy amount of income. And I don't mean that from a negative, but I think there's so much on the internet of like budgeting and I can only do it once. And like, we don't have any kids, we're dual income fiancés like we don't pay any rent we live at my mom's sometimes I feel really uncomfortable talking about this on the internet because I believe that there's so many people on the internet that don't live that way that we live right now where they have a mortgage right and they have kids and they have all these bills and we're very fortunate that where we have bills we don't have a mortgage and homeowners insurance and you know two car payments and two car insurances like we just don't have those bills right now in our life and so where we're saving we are prioritizing travel so that all wrapped in one is we're both very fortunate that we make good money and I think I'm not gonna sit here and say that we don't save our income because we do however we're very fortunate like and again this is where it gets uncomfortable because like do you tell people what you make on the internet because then they judge you do you tell them because then you want to like feel relatable and I do want to feel relatable but I think I just want all of you to know that watch this that Corey and I are very financially stable we're in a position right now where we're living at my mom's and she's allowing us to be here and save a ton of money and we both work in high paced sales jobs that's all I'm gonna say on it and I think it's important to talk about and it makes me like a little bit uncomfortable to talk about but I want to share it with you guys however I never want to come across as we have you know a hundred and fifty million thousand dollars a year because we don't but I also don't want to sit here and say that we don't make any money and we're living off of ends meet because 
it, that's not the case either. So that's a little bit of a loaded one. And then the last one is Corey and I are constantly putting money aside for travel. And I think where we do make a very healthy amount of money and I'm very proud and it's taken us six to eight years to get to a financial stability point where we are in conjunction with living at home with no bills. And I know that that might not be relatable, but it is the truth. So I'm kind of like, as my mom likes to say, like pulling down my pants and like showing you guys the realness. But we're in a situation where all of our leftover money that we have that we're either not saving for the wedding or our long-term savings is a little bit more in the fun money category and everything fun that we wanna do revolves around travel. So for example, if you go to the mall for the day and you put gas in your car and you go out to lunch, let's say you spend, you know, I don't know, $800 in a day. Right, you spend eight hundred dollars, you go to the mall, and maybe you don't. Maybe you spend a hundred. I don't know, but whatever that is, all of that extra money, Corey and I put towards travel, and it's something that we've always done. It's always been a priority of ours that any of that rollover money or any of that additional income, we always put towards traveling or travel experiences or things of that nature. So, this is a little bit of a loaded question, and I know it didn't come from any bad place, and I'm so glad that this person asked it. But how do we afford to travel so much? I get to travel a lot for work that is paid for. I'm very grateful for that. We save majority of any additional income that we have and budget for traveling a lot. And then in addition, I would say the one that makes me the most like uncomfortable to share, but I want to share because I want to be open with you guys. We are very fortunate in the money that we make and the money that we can save by also living at my mom's because we don't have as many bills. So I'm going to stop talking about that question because I just feel like I'm, I could go on and on about it forever. But comment down below if you have any questions. I don't think I'll ever be someone to share my income on the internet just because that is a little bit personal to me maybe in a few years I would be but right now I just want to keep that a little bit more to myself but I hope that answers your question and know that I love you for asking that question and all of you here so I just wanted to be very open and honest about it next is curly hair and just all things curly hair has your hair care changed products you're using etc so I am embracing my curls. I am, my hair is not as curly right now. The bottoms have been a little bit on like the drier side. So I'm wondering if I should schedule a haircut soon, but this is the hair and we are going with the curly hair this year. And I'm very excited about it. I have been enjoying my curly hair. I'm loving it. I feel so confident and just really beautiful with my curly hair and products that I have been using. I have been using two, using two different types of like shampoo and conditioner and the hair mask. The first one is the Moroccan oil shampoo and conditioner and hair mask those are like my tried and trues I absolutely love those they give my hair a ton of like nourishing moisture and you need hydration for your curls and then the other one that I've been using the last probably month that I think has been incredible as well is the Amica what is it nor neuroshine nor norochrome normcomb or something I'll link those down below and the soul food hair mask that has been also incredible so I have been leaning into my hair care health journey trying to do less heat and just absolutely loving it the products that I have in my hair today for the curls I just used two I use the Garnier Fructis like number three mousse and then I go over it with the curly talk curl cream I can have those linked down below as well I'm trying out some new products if you have any curly hair recommendations let me know I also like the pattern mousse I just haven't been using that one because I'm trying to go through the entire Garnier Fructis one but that's on my curly hair and I'm here for the curly hair journey and I'm loving it. Next is my winter makeup routine. We're doing a little bit of that today. However, I would say that in the winter, I try to go super light glam, really light, light makeup. I love, I'll give you my, like I would say two favorite on top of the sunscreen and this is the third these are my like three winter i would say like must-haves in the makeup routine one is the la roche posay like tinted sunscreen that i have on today next is the purito Cera clearing bb cream i have mine in the shade 23 natural beige i love this i think it makes my face look really flawless but it feels like nothing is on and then this i have also been loving a ton i just recently got it it is the merit minimalist complexion stick however the one thing i will say and i'm going to be honest about it in this really disappointed me so Merit if you're watching this it snapped and I don't know if it broke in transit I don't know if it broke from me I don't know where it broke all I know is is that it did and it was very disappointing I still use it because it doesn't like pop out I had to kind of like pull it off but this is also one of my absolute favorites for my winter makeup routine for my base in terms of everything else very simple pick a concealer a bronzer a blush and a mascara and like call it a day so that's what I would say is predominantly my winter makeup routine I can do a little bit more of like an in-depth one this is like kind of today winter makeup routine like just like a lighter 
thing of makeup. All right, so let's get into our next question and topic of conversation, which I'm gonna put on just a little bit more of my like little dibs blush here, cause I just, we all know I love blush, but I'm nervous to talk about this question, yet excited at the same time. And it was not necessarily a question, but more a topic. And the topic was friendships in your 20s. And this is something that I, I feel like I don't talk about and I don't necessarily hear a lot of people talk about online. However, I don't have a lot of friends in my life. I don't have a lot of girlfriends. I really have no guy friends anymore. And we just, we just rip the band-aid. Just rip it, Brianna. Because once you say it out loud, no one can hold it against you. And you're like owning it when you say it out loud. So I really don't have as many friends as I used to have. I really, over the last few years, have just grown in a different direction of my life. And I have a few very close friends. But I think friendships in your 20s are a really, really big challenge. And the reason I say that is because there's so much growth that happens in your 20s. And one thing that has resonated true with me for the last few years is everyone comes into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And I have friends in my life right now that are here for a lifetime. My best friend, Angela, of 20 years is my ride or die. If I could live with her and like leave Corey, I would. She is my girl, my best friend in the entire world. Been friends for 20 years. I have Rachel, who I'm in her wedding, one of my best friends from work. I absolutely adore her. I have Casey from work. I have Sarah from work as well. I also have Casey, one of my other friends. I have a, a ton of Casey's. Casey's that I used to work with, but we went to college together, but now we're bestie girls. The girl that I went on my Disney trip with. I have a Carter who lives in Canada. I have Caitlin that lives in Canada. And those are two friends that I've made through social media. And I have my two sister-in-laws and like, I'm good. And like, I'm good. I've got five, seven, eight girlfriends. And like, I don't, I don't need any more than that. Like I, I think friendships in your 20s are hard and I don't even know where I'm going with this question and the answer because I think it's just a little bit of a weird topic and I'm still trying to compartmentalize it in my brain. But I think so much of us wants to see, like I see on TikTok, like it's gonna make me cry, please Brianna. Like, must you cry? You cried the other day for no reason. Um, I like always see these TikToks of like girls that are like, me and my like bestie on my European adventure, like me and my like, I, yeah, I'm like, I've got my girls and like, I have my girls, but like a lot of my girls are like far away. Okay, enough, enough. Like, this is what I mean. Like, I think friendships in your 20s are really hard because you, like I have grown out of certain friendships and I think that that is okay. Like, I think it is okay to grow away from friendships or like not be as close with certain people that you may have thought that you would be for the rest of your life and like I have my girls and they're far away and I think friendship in your 20s is really hard because you compare your friendships and the and the life that you have and the friends that you have to friends that other people have and that other people share and I don't live near a lot of my friends anymore. I live near like one, you know, like I live near Angela and everybody else is far away. Like I don't live near as many of my close friends besides Angela anymore. Like I have three friends that are in the Boston, Massachusetts area, a friend in Texas, two friends in Canada. Like everyone's just far from me. And I think because I have Corey, my, like I've got my girls feels different because like Corey is my friend, if that makes sense. And I have family as well, but I think friendships in your 20s are hard. I'm rambling, but if it makes you feel any better, you're my friend. And in addition, I find that you can have whatever friendships that you feel like fill your cup. And if your friendships are not filling your cup, then again, people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And the girls that I have in my life right now are my lifetime girls. And I've had incredible friends throughout my life and I love them and I wish them nothing but the best, but we just grew in different directions. And I think that's okay. I, I think it is okay to grow apart from people. So long-winded question made me a little bit emotional, but I think it's important to talk about friendships in your 20s. And I I think it's just gonna get worse when I have kids. Like I think I'm gonna have less friends and less friends and less friends. And I'm really close with my family so that keeps me grounded. But either way, if you're struggling with friendships in your 20s, if you feel like you don't have a lot of friends, if you feel like you have a hundred friends, if you feel like you love your girls and they're all close to you, if you feel like you love your, your girls and they're far away from you, all of that is okay. There is no perfect friendship in your 20s but I have to say to all my girlies that are watching this, like I know you are, I love you and I could cry. And I am, 
And I think it's because I'm getting my period next week. But why must I cry? I need a couple of sip of coffee. But again, to my girlies that I know are watching this, I love you. I'm trying to recollect myself and know that you mean like the world to me. Okay, we're moving on. This is this is like what is going on? A coffee chat and a welcoming 2024 goals. Two like tear provoking videos. Like wh why? Why? Fry and frig get out of here. Okay. Next question, which is not a, it's not fun, like, what am I smiling for? Okay, anyway, now I'm just like awkward because I've talked about how much money I make and how we, and now I'm talking about French. It, it's chaotic and oversharing, as always. Next, imposter syndrome, and if you have it, how do you deal with it? I do have imposter syndrome at times. When we get stopped in Disney, I'm just like, how do you, I'm like, hi, my name is Brianna, you? And they're like, I know you, I watch you on YouTube, or I follow you on Instagram, or we listen to the podcast. I do have imposter syndrome. Like, I, I sometimes I, I can't even believe that people have stopped us in Disney or said hello or wanted to, like, take photos with us. I'm like, am I a Kardashian? I'm like, should I be on the Grammys, like, the red carpet? Like, it just feels... Si not silly, but I think it's funny because I have always viewed and Corey and I always say like if you saw so-and-so in person Like what would you do before I started on YouTube a few years ago? I probably would have said oh, maybe I would fangirl or maybe I would X Y or Z But I think now the way I view it is like they're just people too like we're just all people getting through life and I got recognized when we did trivia a few months back with my best friend Angela and my best friend Angela was like I am fangirling for you like this is the coolest thing like my best friend was like taking pictures of me having my picture taken with a really fun subscriber at a trivia night near us how do I deal with imposter syndrome I just remember at the end of the day that we're all just people like we're all just people who love certain things about life that have our own struggles and at one part of your life we all started out the same. At one point in our life, we were, all, we were all born, finding out our passions, figuring out what we love. And there was also this quote, um, if any of you know the person Blake Leeper, he's a Paralympic gold medalist, and I was listening to one of his motivational speeches one time, and something he said resonated with me so hard and is what has helped me through imposter syndrome or being promoted at work or my job or my passions or things that I can or can't do. And one thing that he mentioned in his speech that has stuck with me forever is, why not me? He's a Paralympic gold medalist, so he was born without legs, and he always said, like, why can't it be me? Like, why can't I win a gold medal? Why can't I run around a track? Why can't I do push-ups? Why can't I uh, compete in the Olympics? Like, why not me? And so when I feel like I'm having imposter syndrome, I always just replay his words in my head of, why not me? Like, why not you? Like, why can't you be a brain surgeon? Why can't you start a YouTube channel? Why can't you create content? Why can't you design hats? Why can't you start knitting? Like, why not you? Why not me? And so when I'm feeling imposter syndrome, I just remember that. Like, why can't it be me? When I go to other people for advice or help, I believe in them. So why can't I believe in me? And so I hope that that answers a little bit of that question and how I deal with it. Because I think so often in the world, we are so fixated on this idea that we cannot, that we forget actually how much we can and so I always try to bring that to the forefront but before we get into our last questions I need to put on a little bit of mascara so I'm gonna try this new mascara today it is the limitless lash mascara from Ilia also what like a quick change from <laughs> one thing to the next but this is I got in like a little sample so I'm gonna put the mascara on and then I'll do a clip of it after but we'll do a before and after all right so quick little mascara update this is without and this is with and it's only one coat, so we're gonna do a second coat, but I wanted to let it dry a little bit. This brush looks like it almost has two different sides. Like one of them is like, I don't know, if it's really hard to tell, but like one is straight out pointy on one side, I think to comb through the like eyelash hairs and the other one's a little bit thicker. So let's go, actually, you know what? Let's go with a second coat. When I put, wow, that's actually really pretty. When I watch people put on mascara and they're like moving their eye around, it like gives me a pit in my stomach. But let me do this other eye, but I think I'm actually liking it. So this is with two coats and without. I don't curl my lashes either. And I think this is really pretty. So let's do the second eye. All right, so here we go. Two coats on the mascara. I like it. I actually think it's really pretty. Very delicate, very dainty, just a little bit. And then I'm actually gonna just go over the top with the Tarte tubing mascara just to give it like a little bit of extra something. And let's get 
into our next questions, which are just YouTube and social media tips in general. So the first one is simple tips for a nervous girly. I just started a YouTube channel. First of all, congratulations, because that is so exciting. I think it is a big leap to start on YouTube. You know, I think that people think that there's too much on YouTube or the saturation is too high. I don't. I think YouTube is great. I think it's the platform that's never going to go anywhere. I'm kind of, I'm not that I'm over Instagram or TikTok. I like long form content, so I love YouTube. And tips for a nervous girly. I would just like start and like film what you love, film what film what fills your cup. I think a lot of the time on YouTube, we think that we need to record or film or create content that other people put out because it does well. And I think that that's not the case. I think you should be able to put out exactly what you want. If you like talking about Disney, put that out. If you like talking about fashion, create that. If you like talking about finance, create that. If you like doing a hodgepodge of everything, do that. Because I think so often we just think that we have to create certain content because it's what we see on the internet you can create content that doesn't even exist and I think that is even more incredible so that'd be my first thing create what brings you joy and brings you passion and what you're excited about and the second thing is just start just go into it go into it as if you have four million subscribers I went to Disney with not a single subscriber and walked around with my camera and my phone vlogging like I was vlogging for the United States of America I just went for it and i think that's what you have to do when you start out you have to pretend like you have a million people behind you on the other end of the camera because it makes you feel more invested and i also think it will make you i don't want to say do better but i definitely think it challenged me when i first started was to think that i was talking and i had a million subscribers because i shouldn't act like i don't i should act like i do and i actually think that that helped me a lot next is tips for starting a podcast so Podcasting was a big challenge for me when I first started because there really wasn't a lot of creators that were talking about resources they used, tips for starting one, why they wanted to start one. So let's do quick high level. I can do an entire video. Comment down below if you want to see that, like tips for a podcast. The first thing is you have to niche down in a podcast. You cannot do a million things. So my first tip is find your niche. What do you want to talk about? What kind of episodes do you want to have? Who are you going to do it with, you know, alone or with somebody else? And figure out exactly what you want to talk about. And my second tip for starting a podcast is brainstorm like 10 or 15 episode ideas so that you don't go into it blind and you feel like you have a little bit of a runway because that was what Corey and I did was we actually made sure we had a lot of ideas ready to go before we just dove right in and then my last one is do research on how you want to record do you want to record your podcast on your computer do you want to record it onto a hard drive or onto a like external recorder and just figure out actually how much you're willing to invest because I think that's important so three tips find your niche figure out what you want to talk about figure out how you're going to record and how much you want to invest in the podcast. And the third tip would be to figure out actually what kind of episodes you want to create so that you know going into it. Glam is all done. I love it. I'll have all the makeup that I used today down below. I would say this is a makeup winter makeup routine right here. Everything I used very light, nothing too crazy, nothing too heavy and just like nice and light, but pretty feeling glam, I would say. And like, poppier blush because it's like cold and rosy in the winter but the last question for today is going to be how did you first get into YouTube and why did you start your YouTube channel or like I assume that that's in the realm of the question so how I got started on YouTube was Corey and I first started dating and especially when I was young uh, my mom has these home videos of me opening Christmas gifts with my brother on Christmas and we used to watch them all the time as a family and we also when we like when Corey and I got together, we started showing these videos to Corey. And I found that when Corey and I were traveling to Europe, when we traveled in 2019, we have so many photos to look back on, but I wish that I had more. Like I wanted more. I wanted to be able to double click into memories a lot more. So in, I don't remember exactly what year it was. Um, I used to every summer make GoPro YouTube video, not YouTube videos, but like 10 minute long highlight reels of the entire summer that I had filmed on my GoPro. And I used to love just like rewatching them back. And so in 2021, when Corey and I were headed to Disney on our first Disney trip, I said, I think that I want to start a YouTube channel. I want to document our travels and I want to document our life in this vision of like a home video. Like 
we don't really do home videos anymore and I want to be able to like document our lives together and our families and our travels and be able to share them with people instead of just showing people a photo and so that is how I got started on YouTube was I wanted to just document my life and share my journey and what my life looked like so if my kids look back on it or my parents look back on it or Corey and I at least once a week will watch like one of our old Disney vlogs or Europe vlogs or something I feel like we get to relive so many moments again because we decided to film them and put my life and a little bit of his life on the internet and I feel like it was just a way for me to create home videos that I could double click back into moments of my life and that is why I started on YouTube and that's how I first got into it was just wanting to document and create home videos of my life so that is going to conclude this month's coffee chat I feel like it was a long one and really chaotic because some of the questions either a as you saw like made me emotional for no reason well good reason but just like you know we talked about a lot today so with that being said also what is this hair this little curl it's just like popping out like get back in there so with that being said I love you guys so much thank you so so much for being here if you're new please hit that subscribe button down below I do coffee chats every single month if you've made it all the way to the end of the video comment down below a pink heart just a cute little pink heart if you've made it all the way to the end because I just want to say thank you for watching all the way to the end but with that being said I love you guys so much I will see you in the next one and cheers to another coffee chat in the books bye everyone mm -hmm.